dazzling colors, dramatic designs, and determined dames. One game never had it so good in the World of Warcraft edition of Extra Content. All right, so quite a bit of pro work made its way into this episode, but there's a good reason for that. People that don't care deeply about what they're doing don't make work like this, and amazing artwork is what the show's all about. Black Plague 1348's work embodies this notion perfectly, although I didn't know how well until I found an image of his studio on DeviantArt. I see in this portrait obsession, discipline, and success. <laughs> Locascio Design's works are every bit as ambitious and, even better, unpainted. Squamous Scavenger here, even more so than the electric palette, Warcraft's incredibly chunky designs are oh so satisfying. From the 100-foot god view of the original Warcraft RTS games, characters had to be really bold and efficient for the player to read them quickly. While the efficiency may no longer be in play, thick dramatic proportions and distinctive silhouettes made World of Warcraft jump off the screen in a way that no other MMO at the time had managed to do. EverQuest, one of the biggest success stories up to that point, was a hodgepodge of really seemingly unart directed characters and creatures just beholden to a generic fantasy setting. World of Warcraft was anything but. The ghoul in particular was one of the first creature designs I ever saw for the game, and it is still one of my favorite all-time creature designs in general due to its sort of reverence for classic undead tropes and its simultaneous refusal to be anything but a unique take. <laughs> Whoops, we might have a new contender here. All that said, as much as I love absurd details, note that I didn't say I love absurd amounts of detail, but we'll go into that another time. I have to wonder what would happen if an enemy managed to slice through a bunch of those huge stitches on the armor. Would it just all fall apart? Finally, here's the Emerald Dreamer by Dragon Sid. It's got a stoic, portraiture feel, which I think is really appropriate for a dragon, but the mounting is is pretty underwhelming. What gives, DC? Here we dug up a few of my favorite pieces from the card game. Magtheridon here is a blazing example of my love of the Warcraft colors. And this fraternity of ghouls is begging for a story. Yeah, yeah, I decided to call a pack of ghouls a fraternity. Did you guys know that a gathering of owls is called a parliament? I simultaneously enjoy and revile this piece. Credit to the creator, he did a nice job of choosing artwork and putting it all together. His corner boxes are far better than the actual WoW Monopoly game. But to hell with this 200 flavors of Monopoly crap. It's so soulless. You, it's just people like, you know what people like? Shit they already like. You know what people want to play? Shit they already know how to play. Why not fill the shelves with Monopoly from corner to corner? People, just wander into an Empire game sometime and expand your friggin' mind. Ugh. I need to calm my jangled nerves. Zag zag. <sighs> Can I assume I'm the only one that got sort of an emotional reaction from the parts of this video where LD Austin subtly adjusts the character's position? It reminds me how fun it is to get lost in a painting and to be creating your own world. Oh, talk about a one-two punch. It's been years since I've made a mask, too. I wish more fans would make them because it's incredibly fun and satisfying to have a mold for something that you can produce a bunch of copies of and paint them in all kinds of different ways and give them out or sell them. Oh, it's just, it's a really satisfying hobby. The sculpt for this one was made by Carnival Obscura. I think I've shown their work before, and it was made for a company that has the Warcraft license. So I guess this is technically merch, but in any case, it's really well done. And I've got some pics of the finished mask on extra content over time. Speaking of official artwork, if Kamui Cosplay isn't already doing official WoW stuff, she should be. This armor is staggering in its level of detail to say nothing of the rest of the costume. Here's Kamui in her workshop showing off her skills and the finished product at the same time. It's ironic that she's ostensibly wearing something many people would refer to as armor, and yet, apart from the goggles, seems woefully underprotected in this setting. This is the finished armor wrapped around its creator, Kamui herself. On the surface, a gorgeous woman made all the more intriguing by her incredible talent and attention for detail. Also, in that wig, she kind of looks like Lorelai Gilmore. Shut up, my wife watched it. And here's one last Kamui cosplay piece a night elf druid. It has a completely different feel from the last couple of armors and demonstrates her incredible range as a maker. Oh, zero. I hope you hear this and confirm my suspicion. It was the hat, right? 
you fell in love with the hat at first sight. Things are a bit different this week on Extra Content. I'm deep into producing a Minecraft music video in collaboration with Bebop Vox, and it's taking over my schedule. Until it's finished, the main show of Extra Content will appear every other week, with overtime filling in for the off weeks. Check back here in one week for more wonderful World of Warcraft wares. Extra Content has finished more games than the Star Wars kid on Red Bull. To see if I've covered your favorite game, click the box on the left for the full playlist. And if you just want to go straight to the goodness, watch the Bioshock episode right now by clicking the box on the right. This is Benny in with Verbal Processing for Extra Content. Cheers.